Good morning and welcome to Whitbread's uh, full year results. Uh, thank you, Richard, for the intro. Um, and let me just introduce um, some of my executive committee colleagues who are here this morning. And uh, you, I'm sure you will A, meet and B, may uh, ask questions of. We've got Chris Rogers. Um, and let me just uh, reiterate uh, Richard's uh, comments there. Chris, good luck. It has been uh, it has been great to work with you for what has been a short period of time, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, Paul Flam, uh, Louise Smalley, Chris Vaughan, and Nicholas Cadbury. That's the executive team, and I've also got uh, Simon Jones, who's the MD of Premier Inn, uh, with us here as well. Um, so let me start. I'm delighted to be here as chief executive, and having spent some time in the business now, um, I think I'm in month five. Um, both in the UK and overseas, I've had the opportunity to review our business and its core growth strategy. And so I'd like to spend some time with you this morning sharing my conclusions. Um, this is the agenda for today's presentation. The structure of the morning will be for me to give you a very brief overview of the group's financial highlights. I think you may well have seen them already, but I'll just give a recap. Um, I'm keeping that brief because what I'd like to spend most of my time with you on is the strategy update. And then I'm going to hand over to Nicholas, who will give you more of the detail on the numbers. And after that, we'll both take your questions. So uh, in terms of group highlights, as you can see from the summary, Whitbait's had another good year of performance. Total revenue increasing by 12% to $2.9 billion. This is driven by the combination of like-for-like -like growth and the expansion of the business. And we've, we've produced a very healthy increase in PBT of 11.9% to 546 million. Earnings per share also up 11.7%. This has allowed the board to recommend a full year dividend of 90.35 pence, which is a full year increase of 10%. Important to note on this slide, the return on capital is a very healthy 15.3. And finally, during the year, we have slightly reduced our leverage position to 3.1 uh, times, which is comfortably within our framework where we set a maximum of 3.5 times. So that's our overview. Let me turn now to a strategic update. Everything I've seen and learned so far makes me excited by the prospect of leading the next phase of Whitbread's growth. The company has really strong fundamentals, providing a great platform from which to build. And I intend that we're going to continue to be ambitious in the growth aspirations for both Premier and for Costa. However, the world is changing and we need to evolve with it and extend our range of capabilities and our infrastructure to future-proof our business. The combination of our existing strengths and new capabilities will allow me to build both a bigger and better Whitbread. And I will focus the business on delivering growth in EPS and dividends whilst maintaining strong returns on capital to deliver long-term shareholder value. So if I think about the fundamentals, the strong fundamentals of the business and what we've seen there, um, Firstly, structural growth opportunities. Both businesses benefit from structural growth. With the continuing growth of the budget hotel market as the independent market continues to decline, and with the increasing demand for coffee. Having spent time reviewing the business, I'm confident that there are sufficient market opportunities to allow for significant organic growth, and I want to focus on creating the environment and infrastructure that allows us to continue to capitalize on those growing segments. Secondly, Whitbread has got great brand strength. At Premier Inn, we deliver a great customer proposition for both, cust both customers that are corporate and leisure, and that's important when you think about a week and who stays when. We offer the widest choice of locations, so customers can always find us where they need to be, the best value for money so they can afford to stay with us, a great product, which is a warm welcome, a clean room, a comfortable bed, a hot shower, and a great breakfast, all supported by a good night guarantee. And that drives tremendous loyalty in the business with occupancy over 80%. At Costa, on the other hand, we offer a really fantastic cup of coffee. I would say the best cup of coffee. I may be slightly biased. Um, with a warm and welcoming environment and the widest choice of locations, both stores and express locations, um, we're responding to an increasing customer demand for coffee anytime and anywhere. 
As you know, Whitbread has taken a disciplined approach to capital and financial management and keeping a well-funded business with a strong balance sheet and a keen focus on maintaining good returns and delivering long-term sustainable growth for shareholders will remain a key priority for me. So with all of those attributes, the board has been able to set out a clear strategy for profitable growth. And these ambitions have been embedded in the aspiration for Premier Inn to reach 85,000 UK hotel rooms and for Costa to deliver two and a half billion of system sales by 2020. I've done a thorough review, top down and bottom up, and I think these milestones are ambitious and achievable and can and will be delivered alongside continued strong return on capital. Brand reputations are built over many years and keeping abreast and ahead of trends and issues that are important to our customers and our communities is vital. Whether that's how we look after our colleagues, how we protect our environment, or how we respond and support our communities. Whitbread manages its performance via a balanced scorecard called the Customer Heartbeat Model, which is here on the slide. And that contains the key components for delivering everyday performance and engagement. We'll continue to use that model and we'll focus and set targets for developing our teams, investing in our customers and being a force for good in the communities that we serve. Whitbread's grown rapidly over the last few years and it's focused its capital on building market leading positions. And with such strong foundations, there's very much to be optimistic about. However, what got us here will not necessarily be sufficient to get us where we want to be. And what I've found is that we have some work to do to build the strength um, of the platform from which we can grow efficiently. The environment that we're operating in is evolving and we must change too. After all, to paraphrase Darwin, it's not the most intelligent of the species that survive or even the strongest. The species that survives is the one that best is able to adapt and adjust to an environment that it finds itself. For us, competitor dynamics are changing through both traditional channels and new disruptors like Airbnb or the rise of artisan coffee. Customers are demanding more value and service. Tastes are changing to be more refined and more health conscious. Technology is marching on at pace, especially digitally. And with cost structures under pressure, there is a growing need to focus on productivity and efficiency. In the next few years, we must retain our core strengths, but at the same time, sharpen our customer focus and innovate to ensure our leading brands remain relevant and fresh in the eyes of our customers. And we must build new capabilities in the areas of IT systems, digital, procurement, logistics, etc., to support long-term sustainable growth. So my core aim is to continue to grow the business and to build not only a bigger, but also a better Whitbread. And to do this, I've identified three strategic imperatives um, for the business. Firstly, to continue to grow and innovate in the UK business. As we grow, we need to be relentlessly focused on the customer to develop our market leading customer propositions with further product innovation and the delivery of quality, service and value. This is the way to stay number one choice for customers and at the forefront of our customers' minds. And I'll give you some examples of how we'll do this later. Secondly, focus on our strengths to grow internationally. In my first few months, I found that there are exciting market opportunities available for both Costa and Premier Inn that can deliver long-term profitable growth. However, with the international business at an earlier stage of development, we have the opportunity to make choices. And there's no doubt in my mind that we need to focus both our capital and our management effort to make sure we make the most of the very best of, of the opportunities available to us. I'll give you some of my initial impressions later in the presentation, but I'll spend more time on this at our Capital Markets Day in November when I've completed a fuller assessment. My third theme is to build the capability and platform to support our future growth. To deliver long-term sustainable returns, we need to ensure that we are investing for the long term and in the infrastructure that would allow us to grow efficiently. 
As you might expect, for a company that's grown so rapidly over the last few years, we do need to do more to ensure we have the skills to keep our products relevant, to become more agile in our digital capabilities, and to build robust systems and processes that provide customer insight and efficiency. These investments will provide the platform to deliver growth, deliver a better customer experience, and importantly, drive long-term productivity efficiency that's right for the size of the business we wish to become. This slide encapsulates the plan for the next few years. In summary, I'm looking forward to building on the strong foundations of the business and working with the team to create an even stronger Whitbread. And as long as we continue to invest in our brands and capabilities, I'm confident of achieving our growth ambitions of 85,000 UK hotel rooms and 2.5 billion system sales in Costa by 2020 and delivering a better, more efficient business. This approach, together with applying good capital discipline and sound financial management, will produce growth in EPS and dividends, a good return on capital and sustainable long-term shareholder value. Now let me take you through the building a bigger and better Whitbo plan in slightly more detail, starting with growing and innovating in our core UK business and starting there with Premier Inn. Since joining the company, I've spent a lot of time testing and assuring myself that 85,000 rooms as a Premier Inn milestone is appropriate. And having done that, taking in the changing dynamics of the hotel market into consideration, including the evolution of what's important to customers. So we've updated and retested the modelled view of the UK hotel market. We've done that by catchment and area, and we've included the structural shift from independent to branded sector. And importantly, for the very first time, we've added in the impact of disruptive competitors such as Airbnb. Within this analysis, we expect the branded budget supply, including Premier Inn, to grow by around 6% per annum, and for the independents to continue to decline at an annual rate of around 1%, with overall room supply growing from 700,000 rooms today to around 740,000 by 2020. Interesting to note that even in 2020, independents will still account for nearly 50%, 46% as you see on the slide, of the supply in the UK, which suggests considerable runway for growth to continue. Our ho on hotel demand, we've assumed GDP, which correlates to RevPAR and supply growth over time, to grow at just over 2%. And then we've adjusted for the market share that we think market disruptors like Airbnb might take. And as I say again, that's the first time we've been able to model that particular element. And with that work, and as long as we maintain our brand propositions, um, I'm confident that Premier Inn's share of UK rooms available can grow from around 9% today to a still relatively modest 11% in 2020. Again, suggesting further potential beyond that date. Here are the familiar drivers of success which underpin the fundamental strengths and competitive advantages of Premier Inn. We've got the best hotel network by far. We've got the greatest choice of location right across the UK. We have consistent quality of delivery, a great value for money product, and that's reinforced by our unique good night guarantee. Those brand strengths are highlighted in our high occupancy of over 80% and the power of PremierIn.com, our website, where 86% of customers choose to book direct, giving us a tremendous competitive advantage, which in turn delivers great return on capital. This slide illustrates the widening gap in terms of customer choice between Premier Inn's network of 737 hotels and the rest. And it's the core to getting customers closer to their destination, which is a con key consideration for our customers. We want customers to think of Premier Inn first. We do this by providing the great proposition that we do, and I'm committed to continuing the investment in our refurbishment programs to deliver the consistency that we need so that customers are never disappointed, which builds loyalty and encourages them to book directly rather than shopping around. Alongside consistent quality, we want to ensure our customers know us for our value for money proposition. 
Premier Inn has been able to combine rapid organic growth with high occupancy levels because we remain the UK's favourite hotel chain. And value for money is important in the eyes of our customers. On the left-hand side of the chart, you can see our focus on prioritising occupancy. We've grown occupancy at five percentage points compared to around two percentage points for the competition in the last five years. Sustaining our occupancy at levels north of 80% will remain a priority. On the right-hand side, you can see our customers rate us as the best for value for money, and we continue to lead the YouGov brand index. This brand positioning does require some price discipline on our part in order to maintain the long-term value of the brand. The benefit of convenient locations, a quality room and value for money combined with a good website means we've grown the proportion of direct digital bookings to 86%. This is better for our customers as this is the channel that offer customers the lowest prices and gives them better information about their stay. And it's better for us because it's our lowest cost channel and gives us the greatest insight into our customers. So we'll maintain our competitive advantage by continuing to innovate in areas such as customer insight, business to business booking tools, automated pricing and the website design and content. In terms of growth, we continue to see good growth opportunity in the regions from both existing and new catchment areas. We currently have over 53,000 rooms and we have a pipeline of about 8,500 rooms. Furthermore, our unique backing, uh, freehold backing provides us with flexibility and a significant strength um, with less operational gearing and the opportunity of an extension program. These extensions are really good for our company as they generate incremental like-for-like -like sales with good low-risk returns. London remains a strong opportunity for us also. We've grown our rooms to over 11,000 in the past three years, whilst maintaining high occupancy at over 86%. Even so, we've got a low market share of around 7%. And with our new hotels performing well and maturing quickly, we're confident of further growth opportunity. We know it's important to take a disciplined approach to capital returns, especially in this high asset cost environment. We have a committed pipeline of around 5,400 London rooms, which will deliver good returns. And we're on track, therefore, to grow our London rooms to between 18 and 20,000 by 2020. Hub is one of our recent innovations targeted at high, high asset cost locations. Hub gives us access to new customer segments in new markets. And we now have four hotels opened, three in London and the first in Edinburgh, and a committed pipeline of 12 hotels. Although it's early days, we're pleased with the performance of the hotels with outstanding TripAdvisor scores and 100% of customers booking directly with us. So, with nearly 65,000 rooms today and a committed pipeline net of disposals of around 12,700, we're making good progress towards achieving the 2020 milestone. Furthermore, I've looked at the pipeline, which consists of good quality hotels and extensions with consistent returns to those achieved today, which will grow as the new hotels mature beyond 2020. However, for the avoidance of doubt, whilst our milestones are important as an indicator of our future growth potential and our plans, we would not slavishly chase them at the expense of return on capital. The overall health of Whitbread will always be the priority, taking account of all prevailing conditions. I've, under I've undertaken a thorough review of our restaurant business and the place that it should be in Whitbread. I had a very open mind when approaching this review, and I didn't even let the fact that one of my favorite restaurants is the horse and jockey on the A5 get in the way of a thorough analysis. Um, the position of our joint site pubs and restaurants is as the food and beverage offer for Premier Inn. When Whitbread delivers food and beverage at Premier Inn, we are able to guarantee the consistency of our product and service, and that drives higher rev par and guest scores, especially compared to restaurants operated by others. 
During the review of the business model, we reached a number of very clear conclusions that support the joint site model as the best food and beverage choice for Premier Inn. Firstly, the, the provision of breakfast and dinner is critical to the Premier Inn proposition and does produce higher occupancy. Joint sites are the best model to get higher guest scores, which have, uh, have driven a provable and measurable rev par uplift in the Premier Inn versus the other forms of F&B offer. And so they create value in Premier Inn over and above the restaurant's own direct returns. They provide a powerful differentiator to other budget competitors and to disruptors like Airbnb. The joint site model gives us opportunities to exploit our freehold sites for extensions and for site redevelopments. And finally, the joint site model produces operating and capital efficiencies that deliver better returns than soulless or co-located third party restaurants. That means that we do have access to smaller catchments and markets through an improved total site return when we include a branded restaurant. Through the course of that, our evaluation, we've also identified some additional value from efficiency and productivity improvements that we can make, including the simplification of our brands. And you may have noticed that we recently announced that our Tabe Arm branded restaurants will be rebranded to Brewers Fair during the course of this year. I'm encouraged by the progress we've demonstrated at the latest Beef Eater and Brewers Fair formats and believe that these can be highly supportive to Premier Inn's future growth. We've also launched a new contemporary brand for Beef Eater, which is a small format joint site designed to improve the returns in towns and city centre hotels. So in summary, in terms of growing and innovating our UK business in Premier Inn, we've got an exciting opportunity to build on our brilliant customer proposition and continue to expand our UK business presence, both to 2020 and beyond. So continuing with the theme of growing and innovating in our core UK business, but turning now to Costa. I'm confirming our ambitions to grow Costa's system sales to around two and a half billion by 2020. Again, we have remodeled and retested our UK network plans in the light of changing trends and a much more competitive environment. It's clear that there are good opportunities for further growth not just to the two and a half thousand stores we need, but beyond, and not just to the proposed express machine expansion targets, but beyond those two. The UK coffee shop market has seen unprecedented growth in the past two decades and has fast become the place of choice for people to meet and to work. There's a growing demand for quality coffee and customers are drinking more coffee than ever before. But as you can see on the right hand side, Coffee consumption per capita in the UK is still relatively low in comparison to many other countries, leaving plenty of growth opportunities going forward. As the UK's favourite coffee shop, Costa is well placed to capitalise on future market growth, but there can be no complacency. Being number one gives us a strong starting point as we offer our customers a really good cup of coffee and the greatest choice of locations. But we also need to continually improve our stores, our formats, our food offering, and look for new and better ways to serve our customers and to retain our brand leadership. The expectations of Costa customers are rising, and we need to ensure we are better equipped to meet them. Convenience and coffee quality remain essential, but customers are becoming more sophisticated and wanting more, fresher and healthier food, faster service, better loyalty schemes and a greater digital experience are all becoming increasingly important to drive customer satisfaction and to grow sales. And these are all areas in which we will invest. To meet our demands, we will need to speed up our rate of innovation. Our new Fresco concept launched in December 2015, centered on fresh, healthy food, and it's been really successful. The aim is now to provide a platform for us to broaden our food range and quality credentials and the opportunity to wide our product, widen our product offering across all of our shops in the UK. We're also building on the taste of our great mocha coffee to build our coffee credentials, responding to customers' increasing demands for quality coffee. In a couple of months' time, we will test finer coffee concepts in a store in Sheldon Street, which will give three new origin coffees and three new brewing techniques on the site. 
Our fast format Pronto facilitates coffee on the go and is based on our ability to offer fast, friendly service in city locations where speed is of the essence. We're also focused on our speed of service across all of our coffee shops and are introducing new tills and ovens to speed up processes. And finally, we're driving our digital agenda by developing our app and our loyalty programme, which currently has 2.7 million active members. And one of the examples of this will be the trial of Costa Collect, which will extend to more London stores later in the year. All of that innovation agenda will provide us with the opportunity to improve our food capture rates and extend our sales into different parts of the day, especially at lunchtime and in the afternoon where competition is growing and where the opportunity for food is the greatest. Convenience does remain important and our network plan shows plenty of headroom in the UK, largely underpinned by more diversified channel growth with drive-throughs, retail parks and travel all offering plenty of opportunity, as does Costa Express. Our new stores are performing well and continuing to, give a, get, to deliver good returns, which gives us confidence to continue to grow the estate. We continue to increase the points of distribution that we have in the UK via the express machines, predominantly in petrol station forecourts. Our growth in system sales will require an increase in our coffee roasting capacity. We're currently investing in a new roastery, which will give us significant extra capacity, sufficient for many years to come. So I'm now going to move to talk about the second theme within the three point plan, to focus on our strengths internationally. As I said at the outset, I will share some preliminary observations, but leave a fuller review to our November Capital Markets Day. The important thing to start with, and I'm starting with Premier Inn, is that there are international growth opportunities available, and the key to success will be deciding which will be the most successful so that we can focus our valuable capital and our time and attention on the opportunities which create the best returns. In the Middle East, we have a successful joint venture which is growing and profitable. In India and Southeast Asia, although the market opportunities are positive, the market remains operationally challenging. And in Germany, we think this is similar to our UK model. We're using our proven owner operator formula through freehold, but it's early days. But as this is the area that requires more significant capital, let me talk a little more about it. We believe that Germany provides Whitbread with a good opportunity. The hotel market is a third larger than the UK, with a fragmented competitor set and a high percentage of independents, which are in gradual decline. Our first hotel opened in Frankfurt in February this year, and the feedback so far has been excellent. We currently have a pipeline of three more hotels in Leipzig, Hamburg and Munich, with the aim of having six to eight hotels open by 2020. We're looking at a commitment of capital of some 60 to 100 million per annum and to gather pace in what we perceive as an attractive market. However, I do think we will need to look for opportunities to test faster our hypothesis that we'll be successful in Germany. Turning to Costa, I've included Costa Express in this section, although, as I've said previously, there's plenty of growth left for Costa Express in the UK. I put it here because I'm also excited about their international opportunity. The Costa Express business it has a really unique market position with first mover advantage. It delivers a great cup of coffee with fresh milk, telemetric controls and a strong distribution of partnerships. It's got great economics and we already have over 5,000 machines in stalls and ambitions to grow to 8,000 or more by 2020. We see good growth prospects both at home and internationally, and we're pleased to have entered a number of new markets overseas, most recently in Canada, where we anticipate installing around 150 machines this year. Overall, Costa now has a store presence in 31 countries outside the UK, with a total of over 1,200 stores, which gives us a good geographic mix and revenue diversification. Taking first Europe, Middle East, India, and uh, uh, Middle East and India, we have a strong and profitable franchise business there, with nearly 700 stores across 24 countries. Our franchise business has grown rapidly over a number of years, and we've learned a lot about what makes a successful business model. 
whether that's the partnerships that we have, the logistics, the localization, or the customer demographic. And we intend to focus on growing our position in the best of these markets. Our equity business in Poland has made good progress following re the rebranding of the estate in its entirety to Costa, and it's delivering positive like-for-like -like sales growth. We anticipate this business will achieve profitability uh, early in 2017. And it's early days in France where we're focusing on developing both the equity and the franchise stores, using the equity stores to build the brand awareness in key locations. We've also recently opened our first regional store in Lille, which has matured very quickly. China remains an exciting long-term opportunity for the group. We, we target around 700 stores by 2020, underpinned by the growing coffee shop culture and the status of Western coffee brands as an aspirational product. We have a new experienced local management team in place with a strong focus on property and retail and a, an ambition to enhance our brand awareness through investing in new store formats, better local food and our digital capability. We're making good progress. We have 380 stores across 30 cities, but going forward, we will target and focus our efforts on increasing our penetration in the 15 most important of those cities. So now I've reached my third and final strategic theme, building capability and infrastructure to support our long-term growth. For this element, I'll not be splitting the discussion between Premier Inn and Costa, as this area represents a Whitbread-wide program. In the last few years, Whitbread has invested capital in growing the business and developing the propositions, if you like, the front end of the business. And this will continue as we plan to grow by another 20,000 hotel rooms and the thick end of another billion pounds of sales in Costa over the next few years. And you've already heard about the proposition developments and the innovations that we have in mind. However, to build a bigger and better brand and maintain our market leading position, we also need to develop the capability and platform to allow us to grow effectively and efficiently by investing in the back end of the business as well. To achieve this, Whitbread will need to invest across both brands in a number of common areas, such as people and skills, IT systems, tools and applications, and of course, in digital. And in addition, we'll bring up the agenda, some areas which lend themselves to enhancing productivity and efficiency, for example, procurement, supply chain and logistics. In terms of teams, we must employ train and retain the best teams and these days we're operating in a higher cost labour environment. Technology offers the opportunity to enhance our colleagues experience and reduce costs. For example, labour scheduling provides us with the opportunity of making sure we efficiently have the right number of people in the right time at the right place to deliver to customer demand more efficiently. But it also provides our colleagues with detailed information about their shifts and their pay through onto their mobile phones, which is great for both engagement and retention. In terms of IT and infrastructure, we're still using the same core systems that we had when we were, had significantly fewer hotels and fewer coffee shops. We're in a world where technologies evolve digitally and into the cloud, where understanding data is paramount, and where our legacy systems are becoming increasingly expensive to run and difficult to support, with some coming to the end of their useful life. Therefore, over the next three to four years, we need to logically upgrade our systems and infrastructure to give us greater resilience, better productivity and more efficiency. We currently have over 200 IT suppliers which means that our relationships tend to be transactional. We don't have much commercial leverage for either cost or service. And where we have multiple suppliers for single activities, for example, five suppliers for laptops to a hotel or seven suppliers to manage a hotel's comm cabinet, it makes accountability really unclear and it makes it very difficult to manage service. So we're going to look to simplify and consolidate our supplier base, build strategic partnerships, which should give us up-to-date technology, better functionality, better support, and at lower cost.
Finally, where we need partners to deliver applications and components, we'll take a common Whitbread approach. So for example, sourcing the same labor management tools or the same loyalty platform provider for all our businesses. The advantages of the benefits of scale are clear. Uh, we have more purchasing power, we have reduced corporate time and expense by not having multiple supplier management points, and we get unit cost efficiency, particularly on service and support. There's lots to do, and I've covered some of it in the first part of the presentation under innovation, to digitize our business. As our customers' demand for greater digital experience accelerates, we will improve our engagement with them and develop our loyalty programs, our website, our mobile applications, and our social media communication. To do this, we need to bring in-house our digital capability, which previously has been outsourced so that we can work in a more fast and agile way in delivering for customers. Co-locating our digital teams into one Whitbread site will allow for collaboration and better, more productive use of what is a scarce resource. Alongside our investment plans, we'll also move productivity and efficiency up the agenda, given the size and scale of the business today and our further plans for growth. I can see a number of opportunities to investigate over the coming months, for example, upgrading our financial systems, developing better procurement synergies across Whitbread, <laughs> alongside a good look at our supply chain and logistics operations. Examples of opportunities in procurement across the, the group will include increasing our skill base, smarter sourcing and tendering, simplifying our operations, making more efficient refurbishments and focusing our restaurants through fewer brands. We've grown rapidly over the last few years and to give you a sense of that, there's a few killer stats from our business. We've increased deliveries by nearly 60% in the last five years to now two and a half thousand deliveries every day, that's two a minute. The volume of us through our supply chain has grown by 70% to 52 million cases. We've increased the SKUs, the single units we have, by nearly 50% to 3,000. And we now operate 225 vehicles which travel 18 million kilometers every year. For an area of that significance, moving our capability forward should give us opportunities for productivity gains, and this will be reviewed in more detail in the coming few months. Overall, building our capabilities and platform to support long-term growth for Whitbread is an essential component to stay market leading and to retain our value for money credentials by delivering long-term productivity and efficiency that's right for the scale of the business which we wish to become. This won't be a five minute job, our program will be done in a planned way over several years both to phase the investment and to make the change in the most logical way. So to conclude, Whitbread's had another successful year with good growth in revenue, profits and dividends, once again demonstrating the strong fundamentals that underpin this, this proven business model. The positive impressions that I had when I was first approached about becoming CEO have been fully confirmed over the first few months of being with Whitbread. I'm excited to lead Whitbread through the next phase of its ambitious growth plan and to build a bigger and better group by adding fresh capabilities to our current strong franchise. Both Premier Inn and Costa benefit from attractive structural growth opportunities with significant further potential. Whitbread is investing to ensure it has the appropriate environment and infrastructure to capitalize on these opportunities. We have great market leading brands that we will nurture and develop to stay number one. I'm keen to reinforce a relentless focus on the customer and on innovation to do this. In a fast paced, changing and increasingly digital world with rising customer expectations, it's essential to develop a flexible, productive and efficient platform for the future. I and the whole of the Whitbread leadership team are committed to disciplined financial and capital management to drive long-term growth in earnings and dividends and good return on capital. In this way, we intend to create significant further value for our shareholders. Thank you very much for your attention through what was quite a long session, but I hope was a thorough review. I'd now like to hand over to Nicholas, who will take you through the group's financial results.